OK, so parametric equations are another way of describing curves. And they're quite a neat way of doing it as well. And instead of having one uh, block equation, uh, which we refer to uh, traditionally as a Cartesian equation. These are the types of equations that you've been using uh, throughout your mathematical career so far. So things like y equals x, or x plus y equals 5, or x squared plus y squared equals 16. Okay, These are all examples of Cartesian equations. And the key difference with that is that that one equation describes the curve, whereas parametric equations, you could have uh, two equations in two dimensions. So one equation that decides how the x is going to behave, and one equation that decides how the y is going to behave. And because you have this more uh, versatile approach to designing how the curve is going to behave, that means you can get some quite weird and wacky looking uh, parametric curves. Whereas um, all of those Cartesian curves that you've been used to can still be written parametrically. Okay? Um, it's just that now you can branch out into all sorts of different looking curves, ones that loop around each other and cross themselves, and all sorts of things like this. Okay, So what we're thinking about here is instead of having one block equation, we have one equation for x and one for y when we're working in two dimensions. And obviously, you know, you, can, you could branch this out even further and look at, three-dimensional curves and how they could be um, determined parametrically that way. Okay, but that's beyond the, beyond the realms of this course. So we're just going to fix to two dimensions, but what we're saying is that x can be some function of something else, something that is changing. So we could have some function of t, for example, and y is also some function of t. Now, t here is what we refer to as the parameter. So, t is the parameter. Now, quite a neat way of thinking about t is of it representing time, for example. So, what is happening to x and y as we move through time? So, that's kind of quite a nice way of thinking about it. That doesn't mean to say that t always represents time, okay? But that's one way of looking at how something is moving as time moves on, okay? So, um, let's look at an, uh, an example. So let's say I could have x being equal to t squared, for example, and y being equal to t plus 1. And here is a pair of parametric equations. And we don't know what they look like, OK, on a graph. So one way that we can look at how parametric equations look is either through graphing them on Autograph or Desmos or GeoGebra, or we could plot some points and just have a look at what it looks like then. So if we have some values of t, which is going to give me some values of x and y to plot, so if I start off with minus 4 and go up in whole numbers up to 4, I think. Well, that's as far as I could possibly go anyway. OK. So x is squaring the t. So we'll get 16, 9, 4, 1, 0, 1, 4, 9, 16. And y is just adding 1. So we'd have minus 3, minus 2. So we're adding 1 to the t's here. So minus 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And it's the x and y that are still the coordinates okay, of the curve. It just so happens that x and y are governed by functions of t. OK, so let's give ourselves some 
room here. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Okay, that'll do. Going up in the X's. And then for the Y's, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Okay, right. So, let's see then. So, we've got 16 minus 3. So, 16 minus 3, so somewhere about there. Then we've got 9 minus 2, so 9 minus 2, so somewhere about there. We've got 4 minus 1, so about there. Uh, 1, 0, so 1, 0 would be there. Then we've got 0, 1, which is there. And then 1, 2, which is there. And then 4, 3, which is there. And 9, 4, which is about there. And 16, 5, so about there. Okay, so what you've got is a curve that looks something like that. Okay, so it's quite, it, is, it is actually a parabola on its side in this case. Okay, so here is a curve that is now defined by these parametric equations. OK, and that's how it works. And what you can think of is that where am I on the curve? Um, well, this is when uh, t was 4. So that could be at 4 seconds and that could be at 3 seconds, 2 seconds, 1 second, 0, for example. OK, obviously it doesn't make much sense going into negative time. But if you just had when t was positive, you just have that part of the curve. OK, so you could think of as that parameter as being the time element that governs where you are at a particular time. OK, um, so you can use that concept going forward in order to think of, well, what do these graphs look like and what properties do they have?